on this, but I wanted to ask you just about how you felt about it all. Oh, I was hyped. <laughs> I was, I wasn't even, I'm not going to say I wasn't expecting it, but I was, uh, I was mad curious what, um, that one jam session at foundation room was going to lead to. Cause I remember you were saying, you know, you're putting together a record and you know, no covers, everyone should sing what you want to sing, but like in jam format. And so I was like, damn, I was like, okay, I kind of, I want to see, you know, where this will lead. And then of course COVID happened. And then, and I know that session was very shortly before all, all of COVID too. It was probably like a couple <laughs> weeks before people were like shutting shit down. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, it, it all just, it really, it really like caught everybody like in the middle of something new. And I feel like in a weird way, like everybody can relate to that. But I was super like, like, oh, okay. Like, cause I mean, nobody knew how to do anything. I feel like I didn't know, really know how to navigate through my projects. Cause I was like, okay, now I have to do everything remotely. Now everybody's doing everything remotely. And then it's also um, leaves a short supply of people to be doing one thing because there's so many people and so many artists that are just like okay well I want to go record but I can't record at home they know not everybody has the means to record at home and not everybody yeah. has the means to engineer and then I feel like engineers especially have just probably been you know can you mention uh, the person that recorded you by the way oh yes for sure so Andrew uh who's been a really good friend of mine for about five years uh he actually um, him and uh, his business partner opened up um, a studio at Band Barracks over in the southeast off 45 South. And um, so recording there was uh, honestly a blessing because it was a one, it was a beautiful studio. And, um, you know, of course, we all took precaution and stuff like that. It was kind of like I was a little sus at first just because it is like a big area. But I mean, it was just one private studio and, you know, it was just me and him and for a while. Um, we were kind of like trying to find a good vibe for it because everybody's kind of feeling some type of way about most things. And then also, you know, I'm, I'm HRT, which is a, the hormone replacement therapy. So for me, I haven't sang since. <laughs> oh, how your crazy. So like, I was like trying to like, uh, like really find out where I was. I was like, I don't know what I am anymore. Like soprano, alto, <laughs> baritone, any of that. I was like, I had to like, really like sing things over and over again and then I was like okay well okay well like and then but I knew I was like you know once I hit you know oopsie uh some talk box parts I was like this is gonna where I'm really gonna be able to like find the funk in it and I'm gonna have or I'm gonna like enjoy um recording it and it'll just come a little bit more naturally to me because opposed to that it was just kind of like all right, I need to remember what notes. I need to feel where I can sing because sometimes muscle memory didn't work because my voice would crack where I would normally be able to hit some notes. So I was like, yeah. Shoot. <laughs> I was like, and then yeah. I told him, I was like, I know him and I are are both kind of the same. Like sometimes we can procrastinate. So I was like, all right, let's start recording this like three weeks before, so that <laughs> we can, <laughs> so, so we can have something, and then we can just jump back into it um fairly later or like a little closer to when we both have time to do it and stuff like that because he had to record other people too yeah. and i know he uh, really as well so oh man well i absolutely appreciate y'all so much for putting the time in and uh putting the work in it turned out really well i think um yeah the talk talk box is absolutely perfect um, I'm really excited hey. for you. Um, I would say it means a lot to me because um, I love one being giving a space to express uh, things that I feel um, basically um, inspired by or things that I feel very strong about. Um, I also love the many genres that it's because as a pop singer and black artist I feel it's very easy to put me in this bubble and I like that that kind of gave me an opportunity to experience more uh 
more of what I have to offer as an artist and as a black woman. Um, so I think that's actually really cool. But uh, just to be able to get back to the community and, you know, if people hear it, I hope that it resonates in their spirit. And I believe what comes from the heart reaches the heart. So yeah, I think it was, I, for me, it was an incredible experience. So I'm grateful. Um, as far as working on a project like this, like, honestly, I've never really, I've never, ever, actually never, ever, saying anything that anybody's ever given me before which is really cool because I've always wanted to do stuff like that anyways so I was just like okay well this is cool like this is really different for me like having to go by other people's harmonies and other people's lyrics it's not something that like a lot of artists are used to doing anyways you know what I mean like especially when you're coming up on the scene and stuff you're used to just writing your own stuff but yeah that that was pretty different for me but but I enjoyed it it was really fun I'm really excited to hear how it turns out and how it sounds with everyone on it yeah, no, like that, that was something that was very different for me as well. Um, one, one thing that I have learned in this industry, and maybe you've experienced this as well, uh, is that it can be hella racist and hella sexist sometimes. And mm -hmm. um, I wanted to create a record where, you know, inclusivity and diversity weren't even thought about because that's what we were leading with, you know, and mm -hmm. um, be, be that through the way that people choose to identify or who they choose to love or mm -hmm. their their backgrounds or whatever you know the 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 city of Houston is filled with so many talented people that really are just waiting for an opportunity yeah and for sure. I looked at this album process and me you know being able to to compose something so different um as a way for me to give back and you know use my platform as a way to help launch y'all and uh in turn also giving myself an opportunity to like share this completely different part of my brain mm -hmm. um outside of you know my work with the suckers or with anybody that i'm working with and um i feel like it's a time for a lot of women right now to mm -hmm. um just really step into their seasons and mm -hmm. so it was really nice to um, almost be able to like, not manipulate the voices, but like, because I couldn't, you know, have everyone there every single day or mm -hmm. uh, for a long period of time, like I would with a, with a choir, like how I really wanted to, um, I was able to almost like study your voices a bit more and mm -hmm. like hear like where we could add and like, um, like fill the lushness so it was almost like mm -hmm. painting around mm -hmm. what every person did and so mm -hmm. no one's heard the pro like aside from uh the engineer that i'm working with no one has heard uh the final projects yet and so we're finally we had a little bit of a delay but we're getting ready to send it all to mixing and i'm super excited and um you know the the vision was to have uh 50 voices which we couldn't have because of covid but yeah. in total, once everything is said and done, it's going to be like, ooh, like 15 to 24 parts per song. That's still a lot. That's still good. Yeah. That's still yeah. Good. Like, uh, so your song, um, which is We Can All Be Free, is uh, a duet with uh, Sugar Joy Co. And, oh, okay. you know, at first I had you do um, the first verse and it was like, you know, very, very laid back and somber. And then mm -hmm. um, Joy sent her part over and, you know, I had you do another round of stuff. And I ended up just falling in love with like how everything flowed that I actually ended up swapping your part. So now <laughs> Joy, is, Joy is verse one and you're verse two. And I added a choir underneath everything that you did and there's all these like additional like very lush layers that that come in um but the the lyric content for all of these songs um while i feel it's going to be very reflective of the time right now mm -hmm. um i was telling zamaji earlier that this music was all written before uh, George Floyd died before Breonna Taylor died. Mm -hmm. Like, like I, it was just really how I felt. And mm -hmm. um, I felt like if I wrote music that promoted unity, but 
really also allowed whoever was singing to like really say some truth, but in like a really honest way, Mm -hmm. it would almost take it to another level. And I felt like I could only trust myself so much with, with like that responsibility. I was like, okay, Mm -hmm. this is my, you know, this is like some very like real poetry. And so to hear you and Joy just kind of like elevate it, like I'm, I'm just like in just complete uh, <laughs> love with what you guys did, and I'm so yeah. excited for you know the next batch of people to hear this, and you know then inquire about whatever it is that they want to ask you to do with them because yeah. I feel like the sky is only up from here, mm-hmm. um, and I hope, I hope, hope, hope that it encourages uh, other artists within the community. Uh, when they do have the opportunity to collaborate with other artists in the community to do that um, yeah. because of their skill and not because of, you know, anything else. Cause like, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's such a, it's such an easy industry to get caught up in some nonsense. And yeah. I, I want to show that while yes, the nonsense will happen and like yeah, mistakes will be made if you work hard and you focus on just the art and being a good human being, like you can do anything you want. Like the fact that I'm actually finishing this fucking record is beyond me. Like, like this is insane. Like when I sent y'all the songs, a part of me was like, they gonna think I've lost my damn mind. And my friend was like, how many parts have you sang on this demo? I was like, (laughs) <laughs> Girl, last night I couldn't do them no more. And then I woke up and I started again. And I woke up and I started again. Because that's, that's how thing. it has to be sometimes. Just to get the examples out. Mm. But now that I can hear all of y'all's work and all of your contributions, like it makes me feel like every moment I drove myself crazy getting the demos together, like it was all worth it. It paid off. Because it's going to yeah. sound good and it feels good. And that's all that matters. Yes, exactly. So, <laughs> thank you so much again yeah. for trusting thank you. me yes. with your gift. And, you know, I'm always rooting for you. I'm so happy to have you on my Bayou City Comeback Chorus project. Oh my gosh. I know I haven't sent you the final project. No one has heard the songs yet. And I think it'll be fun to wait and let you guys all hear it at the same time. Because oh. okay. um, I know it was so weird. I know it was such a different project uh, to be a part of a choir remotely. Uh, I think we did though. Say what? I, it was, I think we needed that. And I was happy that you were like, we're going to do this. I was like, yes. I think all of those that, uh, all of those of us that sing and those of us that do music, we need whatever outlet or possibi- musical possibility we can. Now, because right now it looks really dark because it's like, we don't know when we'll get a chance to get back to like doing music for real. You know what I mean? So this, it was great. I was so happy to do it. Thank you so much. So, you know, I, I've known you for a few years now. Um, you know, we, we originally met through Lizzo at a festival here forever ago, um, like probably like five or six years ago. Um, but yeah. um, honestly, like, through our work together with you singing with the suffers and uh, me working with you separately, you know, I've always felt like your time is, is inevitable. Like you are one of the best singers I've ever heard. And a big focus for me on this album was to find those singers that, you know, the community is always talking about that you're always hearing about, but you're never really hearing them like, produced with that much bigger production with those full bands outside of maybe you know a church or like a big holiday program or whatever and so um i had had a vision you know and back in 2019 um i just got really tired of seeing uh not only the police brutality and uh encountering constant racism out on the road but coming home and really just not seeing the opportunities uh being given the way that it should be given and so you know i wanted to do what i personally could 
to try and involve as many singers as possible that I feel like are strong leads in their own or on their way into like stepping into their uh, season within their own careers. And so um, I wanted to ask how uh, the, this music had an effect on you. Um, I, I think like I said before, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, it's like we're experiencing, I heard this said and it was so true, we're experiencing a pandemic within a pandemic when it comes to as far as like us being black people. And so anything that is along those lines of us expressing that or an outlet for us to get that energy out or that hurt out or, you know, whatever that means to us, it's so necessary, it's cathartic, it's like, it was therapy, you know what I mean? And to sing those words and to be a part of something that's giving voice to that because it's a moment in time that we're never gonna forget, you know what I mean? We've had police brutality, we've had these things for a long time, we've continued to talk to it blue in the face and it never gets, nothing ever gets said. You know, the whole thing with when George Floyd happened, it's like, we saw it. And the thing that was crazy was that, like, you know, thank God there were people that were not black that were like, this is completely out of line. But then you saw people who saw it and it still did not affect them. And they still say, well, what did he do? You know, all that kind of stuff like that. So being a part of a song like this, being a part of anything that would be, that would tie us to this moment in time, it almost is like, it's a, it's a benchmark in my life. And I think it's a benchmark in all of our lives because can we all be the ones that's out on the front line? Can we, all, we can't all do everything, but we all can do whatever our party is. And that's what I felt like as, I think like as artists, as, as singers, as songwriters, as uh, musicians, blah, 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 whatever it is, you know, however we express ourselves through music, that's our part to do. Art is our part. Art is how we protest. Art is how, how we make people listen that might not otherwise listen. They might not even listen to someone talking about it, but if they hear a song, that, you know, music affects us regardless of if we, you know, it kind of can just sneak in and affect us in ways that we don't even know. But that's what it was for me. It was, it was therapy for me. So like once once it ends, mm -hmm. like feel free to like. I'm playing the hop. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Um, but I love what you're yeah. doing, especially like kind of like having fun with what the vocals are doing, because mm -hmm. those vocals are gonna be the same.
buds more. I'll be free right now and um, there are parts of choirs that to me just make the sound so like a powerful alto section uh, an unafraid tenor section a, a very vibrant and like I love a wiry sounding soprano as much as I love a very classical uh, you know straight tone opera like some or, 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 or excuse me, high, a high vibrato opera singer. Like I love the full range. And so um, with this project, you know, I tried to ask all kinds of different singers to come in and help me and um, make this happen. And, you know, this last chunk of the project um, for me to finish is gonna require me to fill in the parts. So my future vision for this is to re-record this entire project uh, as a live album the way I in originally intended, um, teach all the parts workshop style, and have this recording uh, really do this project the justice that it deserves. None of this was normal. I think she's tripping, dog. I think she's tripping. Yo, I was, I was <laughs> tripping. You were literally... <laughs> I was literally tripping, but also the quarantine had convinced me. I was like, look, it's a lot of tracks, but Ray yeah. will be able to say <laughs> that he did this. And, yes, for sure. That's what I appreciate, too. But also, I'm the type of nigga that's going to be open regardless. I'm like... It's gonna come out. It's gonna come out like something we never heard before. You know what I mean? Or, exactly. You know, it's gonna have its own feel or something. Like exactly, and yeah. it's it's strange, like yeah. to a point where I was like, Kim, I kept saying, "Do the work, do, do the work, work. Do, do the work, work. do the work," because I could hear it, and I know, like, for every song that I could hear the ending to, yeah. even though at the beginning it sounded nuts, it always turns out great. Real. And so now that we're at Not this real. part, um, this. This mixing stage, like now the end of the lows. That's Sorry, yeah. I you. Now I can hear the lows though. Yeah. Yeah. But also, like this is why being back in the studio to me was the like outside, inside. the most exactly the <laughs> most important part because this would have driven you crazy trying sure. to figure out what the hell I was talking For about sure. remotely so I'm gonna zoom on this real quick how many tracks do you think is on this <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Well, welcome to recording with me. I love that. <laughs>
I'm tripping now. Okay. <laughs> oh, damn it, that shit. I forgot what we were saying. That shit is fire, though. Yeah. I mean, I'm taking a video, wait, wait, wait. but it will definitely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I'll make last. sure that all of these photos are shared. Oh, no, in the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make all, all these photos on the net. All right. Let's let's, 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 let's. Y'all, it is October 2nd, and I am just. It's October 2nd, 2021, and. The album's done. The album's done. The album's done. The album is done. And I am just, <laughs> I'm so proud of myself. I'm so proud of everyone that was a part of this. Every singer that took uh, the risk, every person that stepped into the, the recording circle with me to make this happen. Um, I appreciate you for your trust and for being so flexible and malleable. I want to say thank you to the Houston Art Alliance for allowing this dream to happen for me. This is my first technical uh, executive production credit. So thank you so much for making it easier for not only folks that look like me or folks that are where I'm from, but just as an independent artist that is doing things differently. Thank you so much for considering me and my art. And I wanna just say thank you to every single person that is watching right now. Um, this is something very different and outside of my normal world of creation, but I'm very excited to be stepping into it. And it's weird and strange and I feel very vulnerable right now, but I'm excited to just see what comes from here next. Um, that all being said, this has been a crazy process. I'm still overjoyed that it's done, but I wanted to be the first to just say thank you, thank you, thank you. And I hope you enjoy the premiere of Bayou City Comeback Chorus, a album for the people, by the people. Thank you. I'm 
to be the light when I can't even breathe at night. How am I supposed to see the light when I can't even sleep at night? How am I supposed to be the light when I can't even breathe at night? How am I supposed to see the light when I can't even sleep at night? We all want to cleave you. A grand escape from today But everything that happens Makes me feel like things have gone astray I try ways to heal That won't block how I feel Nor my words, nor my thoughts Cause I lead with that real Oh, seeking is peace while sleeping Equal opportunities Without asking How am I supposed to be the light When I can't even breathe at night How am I supposed to see the light When I can't even sleep at night How am I supposed to be the light When I can't even breathe at night How am I supposed to see the light When I can't even sleep at night Don't feel bad the hell bad a thousand truths we've got to refocus on saving our youth educate lead with love we fall down get back up all we need so much time all always be behind oh Be the light when I can't even breathe at night